Hey guys, it's Sebastian from Ask Sebi, and today we're going to do a roundup of a few different American Express stories. Before we dive in, my eyes are a bit red and it's not because I've been having a few too many drinks, it's because it's 4am and I haven't slept yet. If you like stuff like this, a huge favor is to give this a thumbs up and to maybe share it with someone else who would benefit from stuff like this. So the first topic is that American Express Bonvoy Brilliant has a really good offer and I'm kind of jealous for the people who are applying. So there's three different parts of it. The first one is pretty straightforward. That's going to be 100,000 points for $5,000 in minimum spend within the first three months. I personally value Marriott points at about 0.8 cents per point. So that's about $800 in value for $5,000 in minimum spend, about 16% return on spend. So the question that I get a lot for this is, what can you get for those 100,000 points? Marriott has a chart for this and it really depends on what you want to do. So technically you could get 20 nights at a category one during non-peak times. On the other hand, if you want to do something very aspirational, very YOLO-esque, then you're looking at one night at a peak category eight hotel. Let me know in the comments down below if you want me to compare this with the Chase offer because it is quite a bit different. If you are someone considering this offer, I'd strongly recommend spending maybe two or three minutes figuring out what the cents per point is for yourself. So for me, as long as it's more than 0.8 cents per point, then it's a good redemption. If it's less than that, I'm going to keep looking for other properties. The second part of the offer is that you're going to get 25,000 points on the first anniversary of you having the card. So in a way, it's kind of a retention offer that they're giving you in advance. I think this is pretty smart for them because in the first year, it makes a lot of sense due to the intro bonus and due to the credits. Second year, they're giving you those points and you still have that $300 Bonvoy credit for their hotels, and you still get that anniversary night up to 50,000 points. So in a way, they're kind of covering that secondary annual fee for that subsequent year and giving you an extra night. The third part of it, and I think this is the most interesting part, is that they're going to give you Marriott Bonvoy Platinum status for 2021. So status is a whole nother rabbit hole that I don't really want to get into, but what you need to know is that with Platinum status, that's how you unlock most of the benefits from the Bonvoy program. So gold status is nice, it's fine, but with platinum status, you get upgrades to suites, potentially depending on availability, you also get free breakfast, and you get lounge access. To me, those are the three big perks that make status interesting. A lot of this does lean more towards aspirational stuff, just because of the nature of it. So for free breakfast, you probably don't really care if you're in a city because there's going to be better options. Lounge might be useful if you're someone doing a one day work, one day play thing like Mandy and I do when we travel because we still have to do work. And sometimes we just want a nice place to work and free coffee and free food, but depends on you. And then the upgrade part might also not matter. If you're going to Disney World and you're at the hotel nearby, having a bigger room I guess is nice if you have kids, but it doesn't really change things too much. If you are going on an aspirational trip such as the Maldives or Bora Bora though, free breakfast plays a pretty big role because that could easily be $100 for both of you per day. The second part is that it can typically get you that upgrade for free to an overwater bungalow, depending on how many other subscribers go to these places when you're going. So who's this good for? I think it's good for people who are not staying at 50,000 point per night properties. So that might be people who are doing these crazy trips, but it might also be normal people staying at these more economic ones and it's going to be costing you a lot less points. So it might get you more than five nights. On that note, if you do want to learn more about this card, a very easy way to support the channel would be to use the links down below in the description box or the ones that are on our website, asksebi.com. The offer on our site is the same exact one that you're going to find online, but using this ends up supporting my 4 a.m. working habit. Moving into the next one, we have the Bonvoy business card, and this one's going to be a pretty fast one because a lot of the things that we talked about for the prior card are going to be the same here. First part of it is 100,000 points for $5,000 in minimum spend in the first three months. By my math, $800 in value, about 16% return on spend. The second part of it is going to be a $150 ad spend credit, and I think this is targeted towards businesses. Number three is that you're still getting the same platinum status for 2021, and I think this is a pretty good offer if you are someone that doesn't want to go all the way up to the brilliant, but you still benefit from platinum status for the next year. This is probably the easiest way that we've ever seen platinum status unlocked, and I've gone on Flyer Talk, I've gone on these other places where people do these meeting bookings for $100 or something in order to do it, 
and yeah, people spend something like five or eight hundred dollars just to get the status. Reminder that there are some rules in play for this. So Bonvoy has some pretty stupid rules in my opinion. So they allow you only to get the bonuses from either the Chase side or the American Express side. This means that you can get both the American Express Bonvoy business and also the brilliant card that we just talked about. You can't really overlap the Chase one though, so it depends on what you want to do and what your strategy is. To me, especially if you are someone that can get business cards, if you're a so prop, if you can repair stuff, if you can sell stuff on eBay, then you're technically a so prop, then you can do a pretty cool trip if you and your player too both get both of these cards. Obviously, make sure that your natural spend makes sense for this. Maybe you have some very high rent payments or business expenses to run, or you just have some other tax payments to make. That would make sense to me. But if you both get these two cards, then you're effectively getting something like four or five nights in the Maldives or Bora Bora. Or again, if you hate that stuff, then you can get a ton of points for economy stays. Again, links down below if you want to support the channel. Moving into a lightning round, pew 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 lightning. If you are someone that has an MR earning card, so a membership reward earning card, you can get 10 to 40% off Amazon by checking down below to see what you're targeted for. Optimal strategy is to only use exactly one MR point and then pay the rest with your card. For me, I only got 10% off, so not too exciting, but some of you are probably going to get better offers. If you are someone that's an American Express card holder, which I think you are if you're watching this video, then you can get one year of Calm for free. Calm is a meditation app and they have a bunch of different things there. Even if you don't care about that type of stuff, if that sounds like hippy dippy stuff, they also have rain noises and other things that just help you calm down. You do need to sign up by October 31st and I think it's a no brainer just to test it out and it doesn't cost you anything. It definitely helps in 2020 if you're stressed out and if it's 4 a.m. and you have a gigantic sense of dread. Last one, and this one is not related to American Express, but Weeble is now giving away two free stocks for you signing up and putting $100. So back in September, they did drop it down to one stock and I don't really talk about stuff when it's not an increased offer. I know that's not really the case for other people. They'll happily keep pushing it. But for me, I really want to focus on the best offers. Link down below. Thank you guys in advance. So the last one is a pretty big one and this is going to be American Express removing the $100 travel incidental credit from the gold card starting in 2022. So as of right now, it's only supposed to affect the gold card. We're not seeing any other news for the platinum or the Hilton Aspire card. And I think there are a few different driving factors, which I might talk about in a future video. So how do we know this is a fact? This is posted by the points guy, who's pretty much the PR agency for the credit card companies. The main points are that you are going to get this for 2020, obviously, and also 2021, but it's going to be gone by 2022. The other interesting part is that they're looking to evolve and enhance card benefits. That they're also going to provide relevant and rich value in areas that people care about. So let's start off with the thing that I don't think is happening and I don't think they're going to decrease the annual fee. I know a lot of people are hoping that in the back of their head. It just doesn't make sense. It makes sense for us, but it doesn't make sense for them because they want to be able to charge that amount. So given this, what can actually happen? So the absolute worst case for this is that they don't add anything, but I don't think that's likely given the statement that they made. Maybe they end up giving you another year of calm to make you feel calm about losing that travel incidental credit, but I think it's at least something. So there's three obvious paths to me that I think make sense. The first one, and this is going to be contingent on what Chase does, is going to be increasing the multipliers for the gold card. So maybe they increase it from 4x back to 5x back, or maybe they add a new category that Chase is now trying to compete with, such as entertainment. Outside of city, there's not really too many cards that focus on entertainment as a category. Whether that benefits you, whether that makes sense for me, is something that we'll have to see, but I think it's a move that they can make. The rationale for this is that the Chase Sapphire Preferred and the Reserve are supposed to soon be updated. So this can be them positioning themselves to one-up Chase when they do that new release. We did a total revamp and now we offer entertainment as well. Okay, we just did that too. I think this is the most interesting one, but I don't think it's the most likely one just because it's going to cost American Express the most money. It looks like this is cost cutting and there's a lot more other things they can add that don't take money out of their pocket. This leads into number two and that's going to be expanding the dining credit. So the rationale here is that don't sue me American Express, but I don't think you pay for most of those dining credits. If you did, then you wouldn't make it so it's only with this specific pool of vendors that you're working with. 
why can't it be In-N-Out or McDonald's or something else? So my guess is that American Express is not the one footing the bill. It's going to be these merchants. And if the data says that it's working, then they can go back to these merchants and say, hey, this is working. Let's increase this from $10 to $20. Alternatively, American Express could also negotiate with a separate group of people just because of how contracts work. So maybe right now, since restaurants are not doing well, they negotiate a very good deal and lock in for five or 10 years. Your restaurant, your chain is not doing well. Why don't you sign up for this program and we'll get you more customers? And we're locking that in for 10 years. To me, that seems like the most likely play and it seems like the most cost efficient version of this. And depending on you, this can either be a great thing or it can be a terrible thing. I'm pretty sure there's a ton of you out there who would actually prefer this over having to deal with that travel incidental credit. Number three is going to be some other credits and there's a lot more to this. I've gotten a few good ideas about this from people over on Instagram. So feel free to share your thoughts and I'll probably do a separate video. Outside of this restaurant stuff, outside of the dining credit, I just feel like there's other credits they can add that help their bottom line, but also give value to us as customers. So what should you do with all of this? If it's 2020, I don't really think there's much you can do and you're not really affected yet, so I think that's fine. Same thing for 2021. 2022 is when you have that big decision of whether you wanna keep it or cancel the card. So yes, technically you can upgrade it to the platinum and you can also downgrade it to the green, but for both of those, you're going to have annual fees and you're better off signing up for those cards directly and getting an intro bonus than doing either product change. The one thing a lot of people don't seem to realize of American Express is they have something called the once in a lifetime language. So if you have or you have had at any point the card, then you're no longer eligible for that bonus. So let's say you have the gold, you downgrade it to the green for one month or one week and you realize, hey, why did I do that? Why don't I just cancel and re-sign up? Yes, you can do that, but now you're not eligible for the bonus, even though you only had it for one week. As long as you have a few other cards, I think you can cancel that card and it's not too big of a concern. That's one of the reasons why I recommend Chase first and then these other issuers. It's because they tend to be less annoying about it. American Express is really good as a setup, but it's very focused on higher spenders and people who are in the mid and the late game. If you're someone in the early game, I think it's just harder to justify. On that note, if you want to learn more about any card out there, whether it's Chase, American Express, whoever, very easy way to support the channel would be to use the links down below in the description box or the ones that are on our website, askcebi.com. My question for you guys is what are your thoughts on the Bonvoy offers? What is your play there? If you are playing that game, do you have a destination in mind? Do you have a honeymoon trip? Let me know, community know down below. And also for the gold credit, what are your thoughts around this? And what would you want to see? I'm pretty sure that American Express has spies that look at these videos and probably look for ideas. So I think anything that sounds reasonable is something they'll probably consider. They also have at least a year to think this through before making a decision. So there's a lot of time there. As long as it's reasonable, as long as they're not asking for a pony, I think we're good. Also consider following us on Instagram where we are sharing some sneak peeks of a collab that we're about to do. I'll give you a hint. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you know anyone else who benefits, share this with them. It'll probably help them out. But otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.